The vice economy can indeed grow a city, but at the same time, it can also destroy a community. But Kenya as a developing economy is here to draw the line on the very same. Perhaps why today on this particular edition of Business Glide, we dedicate it towards responding to the same and looking at such or other policy recommendations that can help address the economic concerns therein in the vice economy that continues to receive a larger share of criticism, not just here in Kenya, but around the world. Well, that informs the basis of our condition today on Business Glide. Such a pleasure and indeed a privilege to have you on board. My name is Richard Mwenja, as usual, and with me is none other than the man who never ages, looking all colorful, Haman von Manyora, in a royal purple shirt. Correct. In honor of just the... come from the UK. <laughs> but we never saw you on the screen. We only saw Kipchumba, Murkom, and a, a few others. You know, that's, uh, I went on my own. You went on your own? Yeah. Whose son are you, by the way? I'm somebody's son. <laughs> the biggest, biggest export? I think so. But you don't say? Well, how would you say? Let's talk matters the vice economy. Of course, therein we'll be looking at matters with behavioral vices therein, such as prostitution, commercial sex working, I should say, and gambling, and also matters doing ingestive vices, such as alcoholism, in there. There are those supporting the argument that it's time Kenya should adopt fully going into such an economy, whereby we are pro promoting vice, of course, with the regulation therein. But let's start with the biggest casualty in Kenya, of course, facing criticism, that's the betting industry. We've seen regulators come on board, oversight agencies, say the betting control and licensing board. But we've seen millions of Kenyans going heavy into gambling and betting, sir. From where you sit as your footnote, what could be informing this major sensation in Kenya? So many youth are getting into gambling. Do you support the argument that we should actually take the industry and not shy or we should just scrap it off? You know, what we call gambling here is not really gambling in the sense of gambling. What is you it? see, in places like America and other countries, gambling is for the rich, people who have money and the time and the leisure luxury. to enjoy the pleasure and the luxury <laughs> of gambling, that which they have. Here we are planting false hope in people that today <laughs> you can be from Kibra <laughs> and tomorrow through gambling you can live in Karen. The thrill of a jackpot. We are exploiting people's misery and allowing people to exploit them including FM stations, which are just betting stations, including cheap machines from China, including exploiting children who should be in school. <laughs> Everybody thinks because they had so-and-so, 120 million now also. You cannot make an economy out of gambling. But those skeptics to argument will say that they are just trying to complement what they are getting because no. of our stagnant wages in how this can republic. You how can, people must be made to know. Uh -huh. You cannot become rich through gambling. The statistical odds are too high. People don't even know that out of one person who wins, there have been millions of others who can't win. There must be millions of gambles or bets not getting anything for one to get, statistically. Mm -hmm. So then that will lead to, to, to gambling or betting as a sport. You know, mm -hmm. for people who have the luxury, the money, to play around with money, you know, because when you have money, you will find outlets for the money. But a person has only 20 shillings and they think they can place a bet and become millionaires. But then see? they go and sleep hungry. Uh -huh. No, they must be told statistically winning is a near impossibility. But Those I people don't have money to give. It is money from fools like you, from suckers. They collect 100 million, then they pay 50,000 from 100 million, from fools. So these fools must be protected and mm -hmm. saved from themselves. But then again, every day we are seeing the betting licensing and control board dishing out new licenses. Perhaps it could also be helping KRA in, in, in I supported Matiangi. Uh -huh. And I was agreeing with the Grand Mullah in a tweet. Uh -huh. These things, we have to control them. We have to. Look. Africans do not know, even in developed countries, the most westernized countries, mm -hmm. there are controls. You go on radio and say all manner of stupid things. You are in a matatu with your daughter, and the stuff that is coming from uh, FM radio stations, you, you don't know where to hide. And even in that America, those things are not allowed. Mm -hmm. They are watershed hours. There are controls. Here we think we have the freedom to do anything. We want. It has never worked. Societies are anomaly guided and protected from harm. 
But with the time, certain things gain currency. They may not be very good things. But finally, society begins to take them, <laughs> make them normal. But while that is happening, while you are arriving at what we call a critical mass of people engaged in, the, in those things, the society itself is also getting ready. It's also getting ready for them. But here we think we can just plan those things to pop. But then again, the yes. taxman is trying to widen its tax base. And by actually giving more licenses to the betting sites, we are trying to address the constrained fiscal space we are in as a country. Don't you think that largely informs... I will not support that. That largely informs where we are. Why don't you have our Las Vegas? Las Vegas. Why don't the people go and gamble in Malindi, Mombasa, the Yani Beach? Those places for gamblers. People with the money to spend. But the boys from Kibra... Wanna pick a pick a machine or China chaka tiaga tiaga tiaga. No, no, we can't allow that. A child from Lombe. No, we don't want. We can't allow that as a country. <laughs> we'll dis demolish this country. This country, I'm telling you, Richard. <laughs> there are two things that are spoiling this country. And our youth are finished. Premier League and gambling. You may add chip sex. Those three questions. Sticking to matters behavioral uh, so vices. This country is going, getting finished uh -huh. because of gambling and Premier League. Children who should be thinking for this country. Young men who should be thinking for this country. So that when we have challenges like Ebola, challenges like Corona, we have enough young men and women who are thinking for the country. They are all thinking about football, Premier League. <laughs> it's just trying to address poverty, no, you know? foolish. All right. Sticking to matters with behavioral vices, much as we've talked about matters with gambling, there's also the issue of commercial sex working. Yes. Sakaja has been called upon not once, not twice after he's, he stepped into office. Yes. We are seeing massage parlors all over the city. Brothels actually masquerading as, as massage parlors and salons, etc. For the governor of Nairobi and other cities across the country. Why is it so hard to enforce laws where we have strike attacks from agencies that ensure such vices are not done because Kenya is here to be at the table whereby commercial sex working is licensed? Why are we seeing rigidity in actually enforcing that that vice isn't actually happening? You know, when you are a poor country, you are moving towards modern life, <laughs> into modern economy. When you are moving into civilization, you think money, the end justifies the means. You should make money in any way. But that will destroy a country. <laughs> there must be controls. Uh, while you might say, well, let's have commercial sex workers. But what control do you have so that children who don't know what's going on do not get into the vice? Mm -hmm. While we may allow women, mature women, to do what they want with their bodies, how will you control the children? Both men and both boys and girls. They will be exploited. Mm -hmm. So you have to protect society. You have to protect the children. Mm -hmm. If you have a bro brother right in the middle of an estate and the children are growing and seeing, they may think it's a good thing. So you have to control. We have law enforcement officers say in Nairobi City, City Hall. They know these salons. They cannot are there. control those things because I've said people think every opportunity you get to get make money, you use it. If you see a brother and you have been sent there to close it and you are given money, you go away and they continue. That's what I'm saying. The love, the foolish, I must add, the foolish love for money will destroy this country. Coastal Kenya is still experiencing a shackles of poverty. Yes. In Kuala, Lamu, yes. you mentioned it. You go to Mombasa today, you get a poor girl in, in Kilif. Instead of looking for other ventures, economic ventures, the easiest one for her to go to is sex tourism. It is a region that is actually much endowed with wildlife tourism, marine tourism. I'm happy you, you, have, used, I'm happy you have used that world. We keep complaining our tourism is low, we don't have the numbers. Mm -hmm. Foolishly, sometimes we even celebrate the numbers we have. We have serious potential for tourism. But so long as we see tourism in terms of sex tourism, which is what we have in this country, <laughs> we never move into serious tourism. Come on. I'm telling you, tourism, we are here to in here, sex tourism. Pedophiles, criminals from America and Italy and where, mm -hmm. coming to look for small little girls and boys. We have to control those kind of things. People are preying on the poverty and ignorance of parents. And yet there are potentials there. We can engage people meaningfully so that they do not send their children into prostitution. 
we have to do this. Yeah. And as much as the Kenyan government doesn't heavily support the vice economy, we have seen many Kenyans going to offices. They come back later in the evening, very fatigued. They want to go home to a peaceful place. Right today, you walk in Nairobi, say in Kasarani area. Residential places are washed with a number of clubs, pubs, so big into noise pollution, etc. We have bar owners associations. We have the Nairobi City Council giving out all these permits, etc. Why then has it been come? Money, uh -huh. money, 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 money. The people who are supposed to enforce the laws, mm -hmm. the people who do licensing, the people who are supposed to make sure we don't have bars in the residential areas, there are enough laws, the Mutudo laws are there. The people who are supposed to ensure mm -hmm. residential places are peaceful, mm -hmm. free from noise, free from prostitution, free from bars, they turn the other side to, because they have been given 100 bob mm -hmm. to go away. Do you think actually Sakaja is cut from a different cloth? That he'll start he will not the manage. This is difficult. It's difficult. You need, I have said, you need... This thing must be, must come from a national conversation. Mm -hmm. What sort of country do we want? What, so, what sort of shortcuts can we allow as people? What kind of country are we looking at? Mm -hmm. What kind of Nairobi do we see being a good city for this country? What are the sort of things we cannot allow in Nairobi? Mm -hmm. It is done at a national level then you cascade it down to the county. Then the county can deal with those issues. That's but to tell me today you'll go and close a brothel, it belongs to a minister. A minister of all people? Oh. Civil servants? Big people. This betting is, you think betting is for small boys? You think you and I can do it? It's complex. It involves big boys. Calls so it, if it is a national conversation, mm -hmm. and I'm happy the president we have now is a Christian. He's a man who prays. He's a man of God. I'm hoping he will draw from his faith to be able to save this country from those vices. And no amount of con convincing, no amount of stories can convince me that those things, we need them. We don't need them. <laughs> we don't need those bars in estates. We do not need gambling. No, I could not to regulate. You can't regulate gambling in this country. Just ban it. Nothing to do with gaining no. more taxes. These FM stations that have been turning into betting sites, close all of them. To kiskia TV yako inaongea mambo ya gambling. Tunafunga sikuyo. Pana kesho. Same day you go home. We have seen the government came on board the Hustler Nation government. Under it are millions of youths in there waiting for the best out of Aruto's administration. But then again, the outside world, USA or any other countries from their service, many of them have considered Kenyans to be naturally lazy people. The world is looking at us as a nation that doesn't have the positive attitude towards work. For you as a city, as senior citizen, where are you sitting from? How much of work is there for Kenyans to do for the youth to know that success hasn't, doesn't really have to go through the shortcuts? Kenyans are not necessarily lazy. Uh -huh. Kenyans lack leaders <laughs> to inspire them to give them hope to create opportunities <laughs> kenyans are not lazy these young people you see are good people but they have no leaders to inspire them to create opportunities for them to give them hope <laughs> then you think they are lazy they are not lazy no they are people who live in a country where there is no leadership there's no direction <laughs> the country is rudderless we are on autopilot. We survive on the grace of God. We need a country with leadership. A country where people offer leadership. Create hope. Create opportunities for young people. Mm -hmm. That is the country we are looking forward to. I hope William Ruto will be able to give us that kind of country. All right. So yeah. Much as we say, like a state in the USA, like Nevada, has legalized commercial sex working and a number of other issues under the vice economy. As a country here in Kenya, we are yet to get there. But then again, if you look at it from the moral standpoint, as a community, we are really under effect of the Western, Westernization culture, ETC. What will be the long-term effect should now Kenya go fully into embracing issues such as do with commercial sex working you know, in the fullness of time? I want to give you a good example. Mm -hmm. Presidential candidate Wajakoya, he said we want to legalize marijuana. And this. There are examples of countries where marijuana has been legalized. You know, are we a country of values? 
Will we have control so that in the plantations, mm -hmm. we have the sort of marijuana that is, that is medicinal, medical marijuana mm -hmm. only? And even if we have the other marijuana, can we ensure mm -hmm. that the marijuana we now have does not turn everybody into some zombie in this country? Uh, uh, how we put those measures in place? So equally, if you want to legalize sex working, commercial sex working, are we, at, are we ready to ensure that only those people who should engage in that are the ones engaged? And that children, for example, are not drawn into it. <laughs> are we ready to, to ensure that this trade is practiced in a place that is not polluting families? Are we ready to, if we can't control simple things like bus, how shall we control, legalize commercial sex working? Mm -hmm. How shall we control legalize marijuana? How can even control betting? Mm -hmm. So now I'm saying to the extent we, are, we don't have what it takes for now, we will have to abolish those things for I now see. and ensure they are not taking place. Yeah. As we wind up, sir, in as much as the country is trying to embrace and actually develop other forms of vice economy, such as ingestive vices, such as alcohol, yes. we are seeing Kenya trying to ramp up its production of alcohol and supply across the world, building the alcohol beverage industry. Yes. But then again, it has become a conduit for unscrupulous traders. You've seen so much alcohol, illicit liquor being manufactured uh, in, in Kariobangi, ETC, making way into our bars at the expense of Kenyan's health. We are sacrificing the health of Kenyans at the altar of a few bucks here and there. For the law enforcement officers who are to regulate the industry, the alcohol industry, why then is it becoming a hard work task for us to make sure what is coming to the table fits the standards or our porous borders to blame at the end of the day? Back to what I said, money, money, money. You give a Kenyan some money, he will look away as people do all manner of things, mm -hmm. destroy our children with, with, with substandard drinks, mm -hmm. allow people to, to bring in this country substandard, dangerous substances, mm -hmm. expose our children to those things because the people who are supposed to check mm -hmm. have been tipped, have been given some little money. Mm -hmm. And because we have made money everything in this country, that thing will destroy us. Mm -hmm. So, but in terms of alcohol itself, mm -hmm. alcohol is a stimulant, just like tea. And people have come to accept over years mm -hmm. that uh, it may be a waste of time trying to say no alcohol. Remember crime, organized crime in the world. Mm -hmm. is traced to 1933, 30 something there, when America banned alcohol. Mm -hmm. So we don't want alcohol. And the sale of alcohol went underground. And that's how organized crime started in the world. So some things you may not stop them like alcohol. You only regulate them. And ensure the sort of alcohol people take is safe for consumption. And all those sort of corrosive things our children are using, which have turned our children in, in most parts of this country into zombies. In as much as the country is trying to control the consumption of alcohol in Kenya, the young nation that it is, just 59 years old, we have seen the KRA find it, actually the National Treasury find it uh, laudable to use that as a conduit for inflation adjustment. We are seeing increase in excess duty on alcoholic drinks time, year in, year out. Do you support the argument that that's the best conduit for us to raise taxes? Most countries live what is called sin tax. <laughs> Ushuru Wadambi. <laughs> and the biggest casual is always cigarettes and alcohol. tobacco and alcohol. It's a universal standard. That if you have the luxury to take something which is even dangerous to your health, let's tax you. When you have enough disposable yeah, income. Yeah, you have enough money, you have and I. We tax you because it's a luxury. Instead of, instead of you buying food for your children, you are going to a bar. We tax you so that you can go back and buy children food. Yeah. But you see, one of the reasons why alcohol is a vice and is destroying children in this country, we are keeping the colonial... Uh, uh, approach to drink mm -hmm. in is. terms of hours, in terms of types. So that somebody is telling us our Changa and our Busa is illegal and these other things. But other countries develop their gin, their whiskey. In much the same way, 
we do our busa our muratina our uki and marua so instead of building on what we have marua mm -hmm. for meru people busa for the luyas and the rest of the blues eh muratina okay for the kamba and the for kikuyu the mm -hmm. and so on and so forth and our changa that way we'll be having healthy drink you know that people have done over the years they understand we only improve them in terms of production and uh, 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 what do you call it preservations so we say that is illegal while we say that is illegal and we chase people and jail them we allow all manner of so-called second generation drinks that are harmful that are killing our children to come from uganda to come from across the borders and to be manufactured here. Mkorogo. Unajua mkorogo? To be repackaged. Mkorogo. Within one hour, the drink is ready. You look at the children, they are walking zombies. But they could <laughs> be taking busa, which is healthy. Uh -huh. They could be taking well Moratina. distilled changa, which uh -huh. is good. They could be taking moratina, <laughs> good drink, African wine. <laughs> now, the things were colony told us, colonial masters told us, this is bad drink. <laughs> we are still doing the same. <laughs> the level of stupidity in this country uh -huh. is unmatched. A, a, a boy <laughs> walks into the office, he's walking zombie. Yeah, and the roof in a toko komdomo, you can run away. The, the, the smell from the mouth, uh -huh. you run away. It's you something. think it's a mortuary. <laughs> and yet, uh -huh. the same government is cramping down on Busa, on well distilled Changa, on Muratina, you'll be jailed. Recorded on tape, actually. What kind of government is it? What kind of people are we? When I use the word stupid, it's not because I don't have a better word. It's because that's the only word that can describe us. We have left our own indigenous drinks that are healthy, mm -hmm. they were even, that were even used for rituals, that a marriage could not take place without that muratina. Now we are saying that is illegal. If you are found, you go to jail. And there are many people in jail today because of that. But we allow Mukorogo to be done here by Bukaniyas and allow drinks to come. <laughs> there, is a, there are drinks coming from Uganda in this country. Actually, the kids. I have seen one Kifuniko to even told me I'm going They actually even have the standardization <laughs> mark of quality from yes. Kenya City. Okay. Yeah. What word can describe Kenya? Stupid. Well, there you have it from the authoritative voice that is Haman Manyora, the man that never takes prisoners. He says it as he sees it, calls it out loud. Whether you are the president, the minister in charge, or whatever person you are, he never fears anyone. The bold voice that Kenya needs going into the future. My name is Richard Mwenja, such a pleasure. But before I leave, time for fun of the week. And it is none other than University of Nairobi student from Chimoro, Chiromo campus, Alice Uku. Thank you, Alice. Alice Uku. Uku. <laughs> because when you we were students, we used to say Chiromo people will hear of, will hear of riots, of, of the closure of the university from radio. <laughs> there was there were such a serious people. Yeah. I'm happy Uku is listening and watching. Thank you very much, Uku. All right, all right. There you have it. My name is Richard Monja. Such a pleasure. Until next time, we meet on Business Glide. Do have yourself a wonderful day, but also get posted on our African, actually our Business Glide, African proverb of the day, that is up on your screen right from this moment. Until next time, God bless.